Ever wondered how your mind plays tricks on your money decisions? Today, we're diving deep into the human psyche with 18 psychology lessons about money you haven't heard. Have you ever fallen for a deal that appeared too good to be true? Or did you hold on to a terrible investment hoping it would turn around? We've all been there. In this video, we unravel the mysteries behind these common financial pitfalls and provide practical solutions. Get ready, we'll explore topics like the anchoring effect, cognitive dissonance, and emotional spending, shedding light on why we make the money choices we do. By the end, you'll not only recognize these psychological traps, but also learn how to overcome them, making wiser financial decisions. So guys, as we embark on this mind-blowing journey into the world of money psychology, don't forget to subscribe because you won't want to miss a single tip that could transform your financial future. All right, let's get started with the first of 18 psychology lessons about money you haven't heard, and that is scarcity mindset. Imagine you're in a dessert shop and you've got a plate of your favorite cookies. You start worrying that there won't be enough cookies for later, so you gobble them up fast, not enjoying them fully. That's the scarcity mindset, always thinking, there's not enough to go around. It's like living with a cloud of financial worry hanging over you. Every dollar spent feels like it's disappearing into thin air and you're afraid to take risks or invest in your future. Now, here's the thing. This mindset can seriously cramp your financial style. It can make you hoard money in a low-yield savings account instead of investing it for growth. It can make you skip opportunities because you're too scared to take the leap. It's like having a treasure map but being too afraid to explore. But fear not, there's a way out. Imagine waking up every day with a sense of gratitude for what you already have, whether it's a roof over your head, food on your table, or a job that pays the bills. Gratitude can turn that scarcity cloud into sunshine. Now pair that gratitude with a clear plan for your finances. Set financial goals, small ones, big ones, and everything in between. When you have a plan and goals, it's like having a road map to navigate the financial world. You know where you're going? And you can confidently use your money to get there. So, the lesson here is simple. Instead of constantly worrying about not having enough, shift your focus to what you do have, be grateful, and set clear financial goals. It's like changing your perspective from I can't to I can and will. This way, you can break free from the scarcity mindset and open doors to financial opportunities you might have missed before. Now let's move to the next psychology lesson about money, that is, the anchoring effect. Picture this, guys. You walk into a store, and your eyes lock onto that gorgeous designer bag with a hefty price tag. You glance at the original price, now cross it out, and it's marked down by a substantial person tag. It feels like a steal, right? Well, that's the anchoring effect at play. And it's quite the psychological trickster. Anchoring is like a magician's slate of hand for your brain. It occurs when you're presented with an initial piece of information, in this case, the original high price of the bag. Your brain latches onto this anchor, and it subtly influences your perception of the discounted price as a fantastic deal. In reality, it might not be as much of a bargain as it seems. Let's look at an inspiring real-life story related to the anchoring effect. Warren Buffett one of the most successful investors of our time, was once asked to donate an item to a charity auction. He chose to donate a simple, used and autographed ping pong paddle. Now, if you were at that auction and saw a ping pong paddle, you might not think it's worth much. But here's the twist, Buffett, known for his legendary investment prowess, signed it. The paddle ended up selling for over $11,000. Why? Because the anchor here was Warren Buffett's name, not the object itself. So, how do you avoid falling into the anchoring trap? First, be aware of it. 
recognize that advertisers and retailers often use this tactic to make you feel like you're getting a fantastic deal. Second, set a clear budget before you go shopping. When you're tempted by those discounts, refer back to your budget and ask yourself if the purchase aligns with your financial goals. The next time you're shopping and you see that discounted item, remember that the anchoring effect is working its magic. Stay grounded, stick to your budget, and ensure that your purchases are driven by your needs and financial goals, not by the tricks of anchoring. All right, let's talk about sunk cost fallacy, the next psychology lessons about money you haven't heard. Picture this, you've already invested a significant chunk of your hard-earned money into a project, let's say, a business venture. You've put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and you've seen some returns, but things take a turn for the worse. Instead of making a prudent decision to cut your losses, you continue to pour more money into the sinking ship, hoping it will magically turn around. This is the sunk cost fallacy in action. The sunk cost fallacy is a mental trap where we justify our decisions based on the investments we've already made, even if they no longer make sense. It's like hanging onto a sinking boat just because you've invested so much in it already, even when it's clear that jumping ship would be the smarter move. Let me tell you in a simple way. Have you ever gone to the movies and bought a ticket for a film that turned out to be terrible? But instead of leaving, you stayed because you didn't want to waste the money you'd already spent on the ticket. That's the sunk cost fallacy, and it can cost you more than just a movie ticket. Now here's where the title of this video, 18 Psychology Lessons About Money, comes into play. This psychological bias is one of those lessons that you might not have heard much about, but it can significantly impact your financial decisions. Understanding the sunk cost fallacy is crucial because it helps you recognize when you're throwing good money after bad and empowers you to make financially sound choices. So, how do you break free from the clutches of the sunk cost fallacy? The solution is to remind yourself that the money and resources you've already invested are gone, and the only thing that matters is the future potential. It's about having the courage to cut your losses when necessary and redirect your resources toward more promising ventures. In other words, don't let your past decisions dictate your future ones. It's all about making smart, forward-thinking choices on your path to financial success. Now let's talk about the next psychology lesson about money, that is, the endowment effect. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more topics like this, comment the word more, so I know. Imagine you've had that old bicycle in your garage for years, but you've hardly ridden it. Still, when you think about selling it, you hesitate and feel like it's worth more than it probably is. That's the endowment effect, my friends. So what's this endowment effect all about? Well, it's a psychological quirk that makes us attach extra value to things just because we own them. It's like your brain slaps a sentimental sticker on items you've had for a while, making you think they're worth more than they really are. Why does this matter in the world of finance? Let's say you've invested in a stock or a piece of real estate. Over time, you might become emotionally attached to it, and this attachment can cloud your judgment. You may resist selling it even if it's not performing well in the market. You see, it's not just about stuff. It can be about investments, too. The trick to overcoming the endowment effect is to ask yourself a simple question. If I didn't already own this, would I buy it today? If the answer is no, it's time to consider selling or letting go. Remember, it's all about keeping your financial decisions grounded in reality, rather than being swayed by emotional attachments. So, think twice before letting that old bicycle collect more dust. All right. Now let's move to the next psychology lesson about money you haven't heard, that is, confirmation bias. 
Imagine you're browsing the internet, looking for financial advice. You stumble upon an article that supports your current beliefs about investing. Perfect. Your brain lights up with joy because it loves being right. But here's the catch, guys. Just because it aligns with what you think doesn't mean it's the whole truth. Picture this. You're at a buffet, loading your plate with your favorite food. It's like your brain picking and choosing only the information that tastes good to it. But what about the broccoli of facts? The stuff that might not be as delicious but is essential for your financial health. Well, confirmation bias conveniently pushes it aside. Ever notice how our brains are like detectives, tirelessly searching for evidence to support our beliefs? It's as if we're solving the case of I'm always right. But guess what? The truth isn't always what it seems. So the next time you catch yourself nodding along to an article just because it aligns with what you already think, pause for a moment. Ask yourself, am I falling into the confirmation bias trap again? To add a sprinkle of wisdom to our discussion, let's hear from the legendary Warren Buffett. He once said, what the human being is best at doing is interpreting all new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. Oh, Warren, you nailed it. Our minds love to protect our ego and beliefs. But being open to diverse perspectives can broaden our financial horizons. So let's embrace the broccoli of facts, my friends. Challenge your beliefs, explore different viewpoints, and remember, it's okay to change your mind. After all, the buffet of knowledge is vast, and you might just find a new favorite dish that leads you to financial success. Now let's talk about the availability heuristic, a term that might sound fancy but is super important for anyone who wants to make better financial decisions. Imagine you're deciding whether to invest in a particular stock, and you recently read a news article about how well that stock has been doing. Suddenly, you start thinking, hey, this stock seems like a sure bet. That's the availability heuristic in action. The availability heuristic is a fancy name for a simple concept. Our brains tend to make decisions based on information that's easily accessible or readily available. So, if you've seen or heard a lot about something recently, you might think it's more important or likely to happen than it really is. Now, how does this relate to your money? Well, uh, think about it this way. If you keep hearing about a specific investment being a guaranteed winner, you might be tempted to jump on the bandwagon without doing your homework. But that's where things can go south. Just because you're seeing or hearing about it a lot doesn't mean it's the right choice for you. Here's where our video title comes into play. Psychology lessons about money you haven't heard. It's like a reminder to use these psychology lessons to your advantage. In the middle of your financial decision-making process, remember these principles. Instead of relying solely on recent information or trends, you can apply what you've learned today to make a more informed choice. So, the next time you're tempted to invest in something just because it's all over the news or everyone's talking about it, take a step back, dig deeper, gather more information, and consider the bigger picture. Don't let the availability heuristic push you into hasty decisions. Now let's talk about the framing effect, the next psychology lessons about money. This is like looking at a glass of water. Is it half full or half empty? It all depends on how you frame it. This psychological bias shows us that the way information is presented can drastically influence our decisions. Meet Tom our imaginary character who's considering a job offer. The first option offers a $50,000 salary with no deductions, while the second option offers a $70,000 salary with a 30% tax deduction. Initially, Tom leans towards the first option, thinking it offers more money. But let's reframe this situation. The second option still leaves Tom with $49,000 after taxes, which is more than the first option. This simple reframing shows that the second option is more financially beneficial. The framing effect can significantly impact our financial choices. Think about it like this. 
When you see a product advertised as 90% fat-free, it sounds healthier, right? But if you reframe it as 10% fat, it doesn't sound as appetizing. Same information, different framing. So, how do we use the framing effect to our advantage? It's all about shifting your perspective and rethinking how information is presented. Instead of seeing an expense as a loss, consider it an investment in knowledge or experience. And when faced with choices, reframe them positively. It's not about losing money. It's about gaining valuable insights. By understanding and using the power of framing, you can make more rational and positive financial decisions. Remember, it's not just what you see, but how you see it that can change the way you manage your finances. All right, now let's dive into the interesting world of the halo effect, which can impact your financial decisions without you even realizing it. Imagine you meet a financial advisor for the first time. They're impeccably dressed, exude confidence, and have a charismatic charm that makes you feel at ease. You're immediately drawn to them, thinking, this person must be a financial genius. This is the halo effect at play. The halo effect is a cognitive bias that influences our judgments based on one standout positive trait or appearance, which then colors our perception of an individual as a whole. This can significantly affect our financial choices, such as who we trust with our investments or financial advice. Now, why is this important in the context of our 18 psychology lessons about money you haven't heard? Well, the halo effect can lead you to make decisions that are not necessarily in your best financial interest. When you trust someone solely based on their appearance or one positive trait, you might overlook critical qualifications or track records. So, how can you avoid falling into the halo effect trap? Start by recognizing that first impressions can be deceiving. It's essential to evaluate individuals objectively when it comes to your finances. Don't let someone's charming personality or stylish attire cloud your judgment. Instead, dig deeper, inquire about their qualifications and experience, and scrutinize their track record. Incorporating this awareness of the halo effect into your decision-making process can help you make more informed choices regarding your financial matters. So next time you meet with a financial advisor or consider an investment opportunity, remember the halo effect and take a closer look beyond the surface. This lesson, among others, will empower you to navigate the intricate world of money psychology. Now let's talk about the next psychology lesson about money, that is loss aversion. You know... It's a fancy term, but it basically means we're wired to fear losing stuff more than we like gaining it. Let me break it down for you in simple terms. Think about this. You've got 100 bucks and someone offers you a bet. You could either win 100 more or lose your initial 100. What would you do? Most people would play it safe and not take the bet because the idea of losing what you already have stings way more than the thrill of doubling it. This mindset can affect your financial choices more than you realize. It can make you overly cautious, avoiding risks and missing out on opportunities. You might hold on to a bad investment longer than you should just because you don't want to face the idea of losing your initial investment. That's loss aversion at work. So, how do you deal with it? Well, it's about finding a balance. You see, taking some calculated risks is a part of building wealth. It's like investing in the stock market or starting a small business. You need to recognize that sometimes the potential gains outweigh the fear of losses. Just imagine if you let the fear of losing hold you back. You might miss out on the chance to grow your money. It's like not learning to ride a bike because you're scared of falling. Sure, there's a risk of falling, but once you get the hang of it, you can go places. The key is to evaluate the risks and rewards. Understand that not all risks are equal and some are more manageable than others. By being smart and informed about your financial choices, you can strike that balance between fear and opportunity. 
It's like learning to ride that bike with training wheels at first and then gradually taking them off as you gain confidence. So, don't let loss aversion hold you back. Embrace calculated risks, learn from your losses, and keep moving forward in your financial journey. Remember, it's not about fearing losses. It's about finding the right opportunities that lead to gains. All right, now let's talk about social proof. One of those sneaky mind tricks that can sway your money decisions without you even realizing it. But hey, that's why we're here, to spill the beans on these financial secrets. You see, we humans are social creatures, and we, we love to follow the crowd. It's like when everyone's talking about that new trendy restaurant downtown, and you just gotta check it out because everyone else is, right? That's the social proof at play. We often look to what others are doing to figure out what's right. Now, where does this tie into the psychology lessons about money? You haven't heard? Well, picture this. You're out shopping, and you spot a product with a ton of positive reviews online. The moment you see all those five-star ratings and glowing comments, your brain goes, hey, if all these guys love it, it must be amazing, right? That's social proof in action in the world of e-commerce. But here's the thing. While it's great to get recommendations from others, especially when you're exploring a new financial path, it's essential to remember that what works for someone else might not be the best choice for you. It's all about striking that balance between seeking advice and thinking independently. So mix in a bit of skepticism with that social proof sauce. Don't just jump on a financial bandwagon because everyone else is doing it. Take a step back, analyze the situation, and make sure it aligns with your own unique financial goals and circumstances. Now let's move to the next psychology lesson about money. That is cognitive dissonance. It's like that little voice in your head that says, you really need those designer shoes, while your bank account screams, hold on a minute, we have bills to pay. We've all been there, right? Now, let's dive into this fascinating psychological concept. Imagine this, you're at a store, looking at a fancy gadget you can't afford. Your brain starts rationalizing, I've had a tough week, I deserve this. That's cognitive dissonance at play, the clash between your desire and reality. It's like your brain's version of a tug-of-war match. To make sense of this, picture a famous investor, say Richard Branson, giving you a friendly wink and saying, sometimes even I get the urge to buy a private island, but then I remember the power of smart decisions. It's a reminder that even the most successful people battle with these conflicting thoughts. Now here's the fun part. Think of cognitive dissonance as your financial GPS gone haywire. Your heart wants to splurge, but your wallet demands restraint. To overcome this mental showdown, try this trick. Every time you're about to make a purchase, ask yourself, is this a need or a want? If it falls into the want category, take a step back and give yourself time to reconcile. Remember, it's okay to indulge occasionally, but striking a balance is key. Picture your financial goals as a finish line at the end of a marathon. Every small mindful choice you make brings you closer to that goal. And hey, don't forget to pat yourself on the back for those wise decisions. Financial victories deserve a high five too. So the next time your brain starts doing the confusion between spending and saving, channel your inner financial guru, embrace the wisdom of Branson, and let those savvy choices lead you to a more financially harmonious you. Now let's talk about the next psychology lesson about money you haven't heard, that is recency bias. This is a fascinating aspect of our minds that can significantly impact our financial decisions. So picture this, you've been following the stock market and you notice that a particular stock has been soaring in recent weeks. It's tempting to think, wow, this stock is on fire, I should invest in it. This temptation is what we call the recency bias. The recency bias is all about giving too much importance to the latest information we receive. It's like letting the most recent chapter of a book dictate the entire story. In the world of finance, it means that we often focus too heavily on the most recent market events or trends, sometimes at the expense of a broader perspective. Now, 
This can lead to financial decisions that aren't the best for the long run. Why? Because the financial world can be unpredictable, and what's hot today might not be tomorrow. This bias can make us overlook the bigger picture, which is crucial for sound financial decision-making. So how do you combat the recency bias? The key is to take a step back, breathe, and remember that long-term financial success isn't solely about the latest trends or news. It's about setting clear financial goals, understanding your risk tolerance, and making decisions based on a broader perspective. This doesn't mean you should completely ignore current events or recent market fluctuations. Instead, it's about balancing the scales. When you see a new investment opportunity or a change in the market, take a moment to reflect on how it fits into your overall financial plan. By considering both short-term and long-term factors, you'll be better equipped to make well-informed financial choices that can stand the test of time. Now let's talk about hindsight bias. Ever looked back at a decision and thought, I knew it all along? That's the hindsight bias at play. It's like wearing glasses that only show you the past in a way that makes your choices seem obvious. This bias can make us overconfident in our ability to predict events, especially financial ones. So how do we combat this tricky bias? Well, first, acknowledge that no one has a crystal ball for the future, instead of dwelling on past successes as if they were inevitable. Focus on the lessons you've learned. Every financial journey has its ups and downs, and that's what makes it real. Let's tie this back to our topic, the psychology lessons about money you haven't heard. Recognizing and understanding hindsight bias is one of those hidden gems. It teaches us to embrace our mistakes and learn from them helping us make smarter money moves in the future. Imagine this. By acknowledging the hindsight bias, you gain a clearer vision of your financial decisions. You become more open to learning, exploring new strategies, and adapting to changing situations. It's like upgrading your glasses to see not just the past, but also the opportunities ahead. All right, now let's talk about self-serving bias, the next psychology lessons about money. Have you ever met someone who always seems to take credit for their successes but points the finger at others when things go wrong? Let's explore the self-serving bias with the help of our friend, Alex. Imagine Alex starting a small business. When it's booming and making big profits, he's the first to pat himself on the back, saying it's all thanks to his brilliant ideas and hard work. But when things hit a rough patch, he's quick to blame external factors like the economy or his team. That's the self-serving bias at play. You see, the self-serving bias is like a pair of rose-tinted glasses that people wear when they look at their own actions. When things go well, they view themselves as the hero of the story. But when things don't go as planned, they suddenly become the innocent victim. It's a bit like thinking you're the star of the show when the sun is shining, but when it rains, you're convinced the universe is against you. This bias can affect our financial decisions. For instance, if we make a profitable investment, we might attribute it to our financial savvy. But if we incur losses, we might blame it on external factors beyond our control. It can hinder our ability to learn from our mistakes and take responsibility for our financial decisions. So, here's the thing. To overcome the self-serving bias, we need to be more like detectives, examining our actions from all angles, not just when things are looking rosy. Recognizing our role in both our successes and failures can help us make better financial choices and become more accountable. Remember, life isn't just a highlight reel of successes, it's a journey that includes ups and downs, and it's how we handle both that shapes our financial future. Now let's talk about the next psychology lesson about money, that is, optimism, bias. It's like when you expect everything to go smoothly and underestimate the challenges that might come your way. We all want a bright and sunny financial journey, but the optimism bias can sometimes cloud our judgment. Picture this. You're thinking about investing in a new venture, 
and you're convinced it's going to be a massive success without any hiccups. That's where the optimism bias kicks in. It makes you see the world through rose-colored glasses, often leading to underestimating the obstacles that could pop up. Now, don't get me wrong, being optimistic is fantastic, but it's essential to balance it with a dose of realism. Overconfidence in your financial journey can leave you unprepared for unexpected setbacks. It's like going on a road trip without a spare tire. It might be a smooth ride, but what if you run into a pothole? The key is to maintain that positive outlook while being realistic about the financial challenges you might face. Prepare for those bumps in the road and make well-informed decisions. By doing this, you'll be better equipped to handle whatever comes your way on your financial journey. So stay positive. But don't forget your financial seatbelt. It's all about finding that balance. All right, now let's talk about Dunning-Kruger Effect, the next psychology lessons about money you haven't heard. Now you might be wondering what that mouthful of a term means. Well, it's basically a psychological concept that can affect your financial competence. And trust me, it's something you need to know about. So here's the deal. The Dunning-Kruger effect is when people who lack knowledge or expertise in a particular area tend to overestimate their abilities in that very area. In other words, they think they know more than they actually do. Think of it as a little knowledge being a dangerous thing. Let's break it down with a story. Ever heard of the story of Charles Darwin? Yes, the famous naturalist. Now, before he became a renowned scientist, Darwin was a medical student. During his medical studies, he realized that the sight of blood made him queasy. And while he was a bright young lad, medicine just wasn't his forte. Darwin eventually dropped out. And as we all know, he went on to revolutionize our understanding of evolution. Now, what's the connection between Darwin and the Dunning-Kruger effect? Well, in his early days, Charles Darwin might have thought he was a hotshot in medicine. But when reality hit, he recognized his limitations and chose to pursue a different path where he could truly excel. The key takeaway here is that recognizing your limitations and being open to learning is the antidote to the Dunning-Kruger effect. When it comes to your finances, it's okay to seek expert advice and continue improving your financial knowledge. Being aware of what you don't know can help you make wiser financial choices and avoid costly mistakes. So, embrace the journey of learning and growing in the world of money. Now let's talk about the next psychology lesson about money that is delayed gratification. Understanding this concept is key. We all want instant gratification, but practicing patience and self-control in spending and saving can lead to a more secure financial future. Delayed gratification is like a superpower when it comes to managing your money. It's that ability to resist the temptation of quick rewards in exchange for much bigger and better gains down the road. We live in a world that loves instant results, but when it comes to your finances, patience is your best friend. Let's break it down in simple terms. Imagine you're in a candy store. Who doesn't love candy, right? You have a choice between eating all the candy you want right now or saving some for later. If you gobble it all up now, you'll enjoy a sugar rush, but that's it. If you save some for later, you'll have sweet treats to enjoy over time. In the financial world, this candy store scenario is like choosing between spending all your money on something you want right now or saving and investing it for future goals. Delayed gratification is about saying, I'll enjoy the candy later, or in this case, I'll enjoy the financial benefits down the road. Practicing delayed gratification involves making thoughtful choices. Instead of impulsively spending your money on that new gadget or fancy dinner, you put it aside for future use, like saving for a vacation or investing in your retirement. It's about recognizing that the joy of waiting and achieving long-term goals is often greater than the fleeting pleasure of instant indulgence. So, while we all crave that instant sugar rush, remember, 
When it comes to money, embracing the power of delayed gratification can pave the way for a more secure and fulfilling financial future. It's about savoring the sweetness of financial success, one thoughtful choice at a time. Now let's move to the next psychology lesson about money you haven't heard. That is, emotional spending. We all do it at times, using shopping as a way to cope with stress, sadness, or just to lift our spirits. But here's the catch. Emotional spending can take a toll on your finances and leave you with a pile of regretful purchases. Think about those days when you've had a tough time at work, a fight with a friend, or simply felt a little down. Often we find solace in retail therapy, believing that a new purchase will make everything better. However, this behavior can lead to impulsive spending that you might later regret when the credit card bill arrives. To conquer emotional spending, the first step is recognizing your emotional triggers. What pushes you to hit that buy now button when you're feeling stressed or sad? Understanding the underlying emotions that drive your spending is essential. Next, it's time to explore healthier ways to cope with your emotions. Instead of turning to shopping, consider engaging in activities that provide genuine relief. Exercise, meditation, talking to friends or family, or even taking a walk can help you manage your emotions in a healthier way. These activities not only save your wallet, but also contribute to your overall well-being. By addressing the root causes of emotional spending and finding alternative, more constructive coping mechanisms, you can make more responsible financial decisions and keep your hard-earned money where it belongs, in your pocket. And there you have it, guys. 18 psychology lessons about money that will change the way you approach your finances. Remember, the key to financial success is not just about numbers, but understanding the psychology behind it. If you're interested in learning more, grab any audiobook of your choice for free by clicking the link provided below the video. This video is for educational purposes only and does not constitute investment advice. It is important to conduct thorough research and consult with financial professionals before making any investment decisions. The value of investments can fluctuate, and past performance is not indicative of future results. Always assess your risk tolerance and investment goals before allocating your capital. I recommend you watch the next video in our series. Don't hesitate to share this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.